OU Cross residents are turning up the heat, Student Congress implements new campaign regulations, and President Trump heads into the heart of Hurricane Florence. This is OU Nightly. Hello, thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Kyle Payne. And I'm Shereen Hashem. Upset residents of OU Cross's neighborhood are taking their concerns one step further. OU Nightly's Amina Schweitzer has more on the residents' latest effort to have their concerns about the luxury apartments addressed. After speaking to the Student Government Association and attempting to contact Cross Management, troubled residents have taken what they believe is the next step towards a resolution. They've created a petition. We wanted to come forward very formal about it to make sure that we had our point come across perfectly clear and there was nothing misconstrued about it. Concerns with the construction and the maintenance of Cross came to the surface shortly after students moved in. Now a two-page petition has been gathering signatures for a few days. I think that we are just trying to advocate for ourselves because we feel like since we are so young, this is something that could quite possibly just be like pushed away, shoved under the rug. In two days, we got 91 total signatures, and we know that there are more people who'd like to sign. This petition will be sent to the university, but right now it's already made its way into the hands of a representative for management company Balfour Beatty. In addition to grievances and demands listed in the petition, it also calls for a meeting between representatives of Balfour Beatty, OU, and Cross residents. Because OU doesn't explicitly, like, have authority over Cross because they gave that to Belford Beatty. We thought it was important to not only meet up with the school that we're residing with, but Belford Beatty, so both parties know the issues that we've been having, and so both of them can do as much as they can in their power. The petition is pushing Belford Beatty and OU to respond within a week. The residents say if their petition is ignored, more dramatic action will be taken. Amina Schweitzer, OU Nightly. The authors of the petition are accepting signatures until the end of the day. New details have emerged in the murder of Iowa State star golfer Celia Barkeen Rosamina. A Rosamina was found dead at a golf course in Ames on Iowa, in Iowa on Monday. Iowa police say that she suffered stab wounds to the upper torso, head, and neck. They also announced that 22-year-old Colin Daniel Richards was charged with first-degree murder on Tuesday. A police search helped them locate a backpack with blood-stained clothes and a knife that belonged to Richards. Arosamina won the 2018 Big 12 individual title and was known for her positive spirit she brought every day. Losing one of our student athletes is like losing a child. We're all devastated and heartbroken. A vigil in remembrance of a Rosamina will be held tonight at 7 on Iowa State's campus. And President Trump took a trip to the Carolinas today to offer moral support and to learn about the destruction Florence did on their communities. He began his day at the Marine Corps Air Station in Sherry Point, North Carolina, where he received a hurricane briefing. Later, he headed to local churches and neighborhoods to visit with residents affected by the devastating hurricane. Trump also spent time with North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper discussing, discussing the lasting effects Florence will have. Currently, President Trump is in Conway, South Carolina, surveying damage. He plans to head back to the White House this evening. Marissa Nuzo joins us with the latest on Hurricane Florence and how some North Carolina residents can finally head home. Thanks, Shireen. That's right. Some residents are now being able to come back to North Carolina. As you can see, we, the uh, rain has really slowed down a lot and the flooding is starting to go down. So they are able to finally come back with proof of residency that they do actually live there. They are able to come back with special permission. So we have very little stuff going on here in Oklahoma, but it is very important to know about these rain chances for the weekend, a relief from the heat. And I will have all of that coming up for you guys. And Ashley Eddy joins us in the News Center with the latest on a shooting today in Wisconsin. Ashley? A gunman opened fire in a small Wisconsin city this morning, leaving three people injured and the suspect dead after being shot by police. The motive for the shooting that occurred in an office building is still unknown. Police say the shooting occurred in Middleton, a city of about 17,000 residents. 
Christina King Miranda, a former schoolmate of Brett Kavanaugh's accuser, wrote a Facebook post claiming she remembers hearing about the alleged assault involving Kavanaugh. The assault involves Christine Blasey Ford, who accused Kavanaugh of sexually assaulting her more than 30 years ago at a drunken high school party. He denies the allegations, but Christina King Miranda says many people heard a buzz about the situation indirectly, and with Ford's vivid recollection, it should be more than enough for people to trust. And the man accused of killing college student Molly Tibbetts, Christian Riviera pleaded not guilty today to first-degree murder. Tibbetts went missing in July after going for a run in Iowa, where her believed body was found under corn stalks. The court confirmed in the last 24 hours that Rivera was using false forms of ID and going by a false name at his workplace. In a wrist affidavit, Rivera said he remembered getting mad at Tibbetts and putting her in his truck while she was bleeding, further taking her into the cornfield to leave her there. And Shireen, just this afternoon, at least three people, including a police officer, have been injured after a shooting at a judge's office in Pennsylvania. Thanks, Ashley. With all the recent rain in Norman, mosquitoes are becoming more of an issue. Starting September 20th, the City of Norman Parks and Recreation will begin addressing the mosquito problem across the city. They'll be spraying in the highlighted areas Thursday night. The Mosquito Surveillance Officer will also place light traps in 12 districts across Norman in areas with large mosquito habitats, such as drainage channels and creeks. For more information or questions, contact the City of Norman Parks and Recreation Department. And OU Daily Papers go missing after an article published yesterday. We have more on the paper's disappearance. Plus, a video game console relaunch may cause nostalgia for avid gamers. Stay with us. About 500 copies of the OU Daily are missing after a controversial article was published. The front page of Tuesday's paper featured an expository piece revealing several sexual assault allegations towards former director Tom Orr. Later that day, director of student media Nick Youngman was alerted that several papers went missing on the north side of campus. Copies were found in recycling bins, and the interim director of drama sent an email saying that the article is a horrible smear campaign that is full of outright lies. The OU Daily isn't there to make a determination on whether or not, um, uh, the, whether or not uh, Tom Moore has sexually harassed people, but simply to report that students in the School of Drama are telling us that they have been sexually harassed by them. OUPD has received a police report and an investigation is underway. A new satellite is cleaning up trash in space. Tatum Wilson has more. A British satellite has become the first to clean up debris in space. Surrey Space Center released a video today of its test phase, featuring the first demonstration of space debris removal in human history. The satellite, named Remove Debris, uses a net to catch space trash rotating in Earth's orbit. A lot of that trash rotates at speeds fast enough to damage spacecraft and satellites. Remove Debris plans to keep testing other ways to remove space junk, including using a harpoon. And according to an eMarketer report, Amazon is expected to be the third biggest ad platform in the U.S. by the end of this year. The report says more people are starting their product search on Amazon instead of Internet search engines. That means Amazon can get more money for advertising on its site. The online retailer is expected to move ahead of Microsoft and Oath, which is the Verizon subsidiary that owns Yahoo and AOL. Amazon will still fall behind Google and Facebook by quite a bit, as combined the two control nearly 58% of the market. And gamers get ready to kick it old school. Today, Sony announced it will bring back the original PlayStation. The new mini version of the iconic gaming console is called the PlayStation Classic. The console will come preloaded with 20 classic games, including Final Fantasy VII, Jumping Flash, and Tekken 3. The PlayStation Classic will go on sale December 3rd and will cost about $100. 
Now, I guess I'm just gonna have to throw away my PS4 after this comes out, because I think this is all I'm gonna play once this hits the market. I am so excited about this. I mean, that is the console that I grew up with. All the original games like Crash Bandicoot and stuff. I mean, I spent so much time playing those games. Oh, See, I know Kyle is pumped about it, but I don't know anything about video games. I'm not gonna, you know, pretend to. <laughs> I'm really bad at them. I've always been a big PlayStation lover, so I'm super <coughs> excited. Thanks, I'm Xbox Tatum. now, but. OU Student Congress came up with some new rules for students on the campaign trail. We have more on that, the new rules and how students can deal with them. Plus, Marissa Nuzo has the latest on the wet weekend heading our way. A cold front is coming our way Friday morning and I'm going to let you know exactly what that brings to us up next. Welcome back to OU Nightly. We're taking a live look outside at the Norman Cam. It is currently 90 degrees beautiful sunny skies right now and the dew point is at 66 even though it does feel a little bit muggy out there with those south southeast winds at 17 miles per hour so tonight our lows are going to be a little bit above normal usually we're in the 60s right about now but we're going to be mostly in the 70s 70 here in norman 71 in oklahoma city and a little bit cooler out in the panhandle and as you're walking out the door tomorrow you're going to have a day tomorrow very similar to how it was today starting off in the 70s heating up to about 90 degrees by 5 p.m tomorrow and then highs again in the 90s for most of the state and a little cooler out in the panhandle so now let's take a look at this wind forecast these are some strong southerly winds that are going to quickly shift to be out of the north. This is the cold front that's going to be bringing lots of cold air from the north and bringing it, bringing it down here to us on Friday morning and lingering throughout the weekend and it'll slowly turn back on Monday. That is due to this cold front that's going to come through and it's going to bring along with it some rain. So this is early Friday morning. So as you're walking out the door Friday morning, do expect some rain and expect it to linger throughout the day on Friday overnight throughout the day on Saturday as well. And then Saturday at 6 p.m., this is what we'll be expecting to see. So kickoff time for the football game, we might still see a few scattered showers, but throughout the game on Saturday night, it will taper off. And then Sunday, as it will all clear out, there might be a few showers on Sunday, but Monday for sure, everything will be cleared out by Monday. So here is your car wash forecast. If you've been looking at your car and you think maybe it's time for a wash, hold off. We do have those rain chances Friday and Saturday and Sunday a chance for some scattered showers in the afternoon. So if you're really wanting to wash your car, hold off and wait till you get that green car on Monday. So let's take a look at your seven day forecast tomorrow. One more hot and muggy day and this high temperature for Friday will be early in the morning around 11 a.m. And that's when we're going to hit our high as that cold front comes through and cools us off and brings us that rain for Friday. And then again, that rain is going to stick around on Saturday and then possibly even on Sunday afternoon as well. So the Sooners are back in Norman this weekend. So there might be a little bit of rain on Saturday night. So I think the Sooner fans should be prepared for some rain because it looks like it is going to linger throughout the, the night. First night game cool weather. I mean, as long as it doesn't rain, you can't really ask for anything. I mean, I'm that. from Illinois and that sounds like football weather to me. It's usually cold and miserable, so I'm still excited for the game. I think everyone will enjoy it, even if it's a little drizzly out yeah, there. If the rain passes by six or so, I mean, I don't think anyone will complain. No, the Sooner fans are loyal. <laughs> Thank you. And new rules voted on by OU student. Students are allowed to campaign from here on out. A number of complaints forced a vote on where candidates will be allowed to promote their campaign. Election season for OU students is coming up soon, and this year there will be new regulations on where a candidate is allowed to place campaign ads around campus. Candidates will no longer be able to set up stations in walking and biking lanes that block traffic. Students will also not be able to place advertisements on bicycles and park vehicles, more commonly under windshield wipers. However, some SGA board members are worried that the new regulations will lower voter turnout. One of my biggest concerns is that we're not going to get as much of like a voter turnout or a candidate turnout as we might if our election rules were less strict. And that After a consider considerable debate, the vote passed 1913 to 1. Congress hopes the new bill prevents excess waste from gathering around campus around election time. Broken Arrow has passed ordinances to regulate medical marijuana and have drawn criticism from supporters of legalizing medicinal use of the drug. The City Council voted Tuesday night to create a $2,500 permit fee for dispensaries. The measure also prevents those renting space from growing marijuana without written permission from the property owner and restrictions indoor marijuana 
restricts indoor marijuana growth in industrial areas. And William Sule joins us with a preview for the Sooners matchup against Army. That's right, Kyle. The football team faces a unique challenge against Army this Saturday, and Meredith Mulkey tells us about the volleyball team's hot start to the season. Sports is up next. After a solid start to Big 12 play, the Sooners will look to add their fourth win this Saturday against Army. The offense was clicking in Ames as Kyler Murray boosted his Heisman campaign with 425 all-purpose yards and three touchdowns. The defense, which struggled at times against the physical I Iowa State Cyclones, will face a unique challenge against an Army team known for its old-school triple option offense and military toughness. Just getting the, the knowledge of who we're playing against, you know, it's always an honor to play against a team like that. You know, very, very tough, you know, very disciplined football team. And, Great football program and obviously, you know, the things that they're doing off the field, obviously, get ready to serve our country. That's always a big thing. So, you know, I mean, just, just like, you know, another big game. And going from football to volleyball, Meredith Mulkey joins us to break down OU Volleyball's hot start to the season. Meredith? Yeah, well, the football team isn't the only group playing well right now. Volleyball is red hot after a weekend of big wins. The ladies came out on top in the OU Nike Invitational last Friday and Saturday. OU swept Northwestern State 3 to zip to open the tournament and then they beat Texas A&M twice. Friday went five sets, but Saturday was easier with OU winning in four. Today the team opens conference play at TCU. I mean, we're really excited to, to see some familiar faces and, and um, it's going to be a lot more of a battle. I mean, a lot of these teams that we've played, they're, they're great matches. We, we love getting wins on the road. We love playing new teams. but. Um, I mean, conference is something that it, it means a lot. And each team we go to, um, we have to understand that it's, it's a dogfight. And we have to believe that we can come out with the win. The Big 12 doesn't give you anything easy. That's why we're here. And I think that's why these players are here. And they've earned the right. And so um, just excited about all the opportunities that await us, really. The Sooners return to Norman Friday to host Kansas State in their first Big 12 home game at 7 p.m. In NBA news, Jimmy Butler has requested a trade away from the Minnesota Timberwolves after a meeting with the organization on Tuesday. The former Chicago Bull has reportedly been unhappy in Minnesota for a couple of months and has listed the Brooklyn Nets, the L.A. Clippers, and New York Knicks as possible destinations. And the Los Angeles Dodgers took on the Colorado Rockies last night as the two teams fight for the NL West crown. With the game tied at two in the bottom of the tenth, the Dodgers' Chris Taylor hit a towering home run to win the game and give the Dodgers a one-and-a-half game lead over Colorado. And it's Wine Wednesday, which means a return to everyone's favorite segment, Winer of the Week. Our spotlight falls this week on a familiar face to OU fans as Urban Meyer just won't stop whining. The Ohio State head coach has lived in the news this season after his assistant coach was fired for domestic violence. Meyer himself was suspended for three games and hasn't exactly handled it well. In interview after interview, Meyer tries to cover his own mistakes but ends up putting his foot in his mouth. You know guys, a lot of people would have said that Mer Urban Meyer should have been fired and he would have had a lot more time to enjoy <laughs> this really nice bottle of milk. Three off games was probably enough time to enjoy so. I would say so. Thanks, Thanks William. And thanks, one California hotel was having nuisance issues and hired a birdie guard for help. I'm Talon Forbes at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Students tell us they are being encouraged to get the mumps vaccination after the recent outbreak on campus. They informed us that even if you have had the vaccination, getting another one would help prevent you from getting the disease. We reached out to Class and Urgent Care, Norman Regional Health System, and the Cleveland County Health Department, but did not receive a response. We will be sure to keep you updated as more information is made available. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Talon. San Diego's famous hotel, Del Coronado, is trying to get rid of all the birds that come near it. 
The beachfront hotel came up with a unique solution using a hawk to patrol and scare them off. The bird bouncer is equipped with a radio transmitter and even has her own hawk mobile. Hotel employees say the pelican, seagulls and other birds continue to pester guests and this seems to be the only solution. Marissa joins us with some fun facts about the first day of fall. That's right, guys. So the first day of fall is this Friday, and we are actually above normal temperatures. So it's typically in the lower 80s, but we do have that cold front coming in, so we are going to be cooling off very soon. Thanks, Marissa. Thanks for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by Gaylord College at the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night live at 430. Have a great evening. Good night.